In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a custom brush tip on Photoshop. But first, let's talk about some of the tools that we can use to make, uh, to use the brush in, in Photoshop. So uh, from the get-go, I'm going to go, and, go ahead and start with the one that I use the most often. This is a, a Wacom Intuos. It's, it looks very low-tech. It feels very low-tech. Uh, it, it just plugs into one of your USB ports. Uh, just has no screen or anything. It's just black has four little buttons, but different models come with different numbers of buttons and a little pen with no wire. It's like a little wire. You don't even put a battery in it. And uh, and what you do is you, you draw on this and you can see the mouse moving around on your screen, but it gives you the uh, benefit of actually holding a pen, which kind of is, if you're a, a if you're an, a traditional artist, you should find a little bit more comfortable than using the mouse. Although after a little practice, you can get pretty good at the mouse too. And uh, also, it allows you to use pressure sensitivity on Photoshop. So if you, uh, there, you, there are different settings, but for example, you can make it so that if you're, if you're touching the pad very lightly, it has a very light, a very low opacity. So maybe like 10%, then you press down real hard and it goes to 100% opacity, or it can uh, change the brush tip size, which is nice for calligraphy, especially like Chinese calligraphy. Um, then, so that's that's the tool I use the most often because, and you can get these. Uh, I don't even know what they are used. I got this one ages ago, used um, on eBay for for like forty bucks. So they're cheap and great. Oh, it's a, a much a much a uh, much fancier upgrade is the Cintiq. That's what this is. So uh, Cintiq, uh, by the way, this weighs about a trillion pounds. I'm uh, I'm struggling to even pick it up, but it's it's basically like a monitor, except uh, you know, except you can draw on it. Comes with a similar pen, and if you do this, uh, you know, you set it up. You need a computer to run it. There's no you know, there's no processor inside or anything like that. It comes with a um, an easel, so you can set it on your desk. I'm not setting mine on my desk because that camera or that computer with that camera is on my desk. But normally I would have it sitting on my desk uh, like this, pretty flat. And I kind of just enjoy the fact that you can just sort of lean your hand on it. Just, you can, you can just treat it just like a, a gigantic notepad. And it's, it's a pretty good size. So, and it, and it feels a lot, a lot more intuitive. It is the most intuitive way to do any kind of digital painting in my opinion. Uh, I use it less often because it's heavy. It ha you have a, a big wire that you have to plug into the wall to give it power, just like a monitor. Then you have to plug it into your um, your outlet on your computer to, to you know treat it like a second screen, just like you would an additional monitor. Then you have a USB that you have to plug in, so it can kind of have the mouse functionality. So you have like these three plugs, plus it weighs a trillion pounds. So I. Uh, you know, I find I kind of default to the easier option. So in our lessons, though, we're going to be, I, I might pop in my, uh, my, uh, my Intuos, the simpler one that I showed you every now and then just to show you, oh, if you, if you have, you know, a, a Wacom Intuos or, or something like that, these are both made by a company called Wacom, incidentally, but, um, I might pop it in just for an example, but largely we're going to be using a mouse because that's what I assume you'll be using. So, all right, let's move on. Go ahead and open Photoshop. Click Create New. And the custom doesn't, or the, I'm sorry, the size doesn't really matter for now. Let's just choose one. That's a nice size. Let's choose one. Okay. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is select the brush tool. The brush tool looks like a little paintbrush. And if you don't see it over here in your palettes, actually, I mine is, mine is already open, but you know what? I'm going to close it just so we can go through the process of going out and finding it. Go up here to window. We're going to find the brush palette. Brushes. There we are, brushes. So you can pop that open. And actually, uh, also open brush settings. There we go. I like to keep those bunched together, kind of use them in tandem. And hide them right there. There we go. So the brush 
palette has a few options and it mostly deals with uh the size and the softness of the brush and um a few other things the simplest one is hard and round uh it, it kind of does what you'd expect let me change it to black and white by pressing this little button here so the four color the foreground color is the color that your brush will put down on the canvas pretty simple right Now here's where you can choose the size. 12 pixels is pretty small, so I'm going to drag this over and make it bigger. There are 73 pixels. Let's make it bigger. Just because we're going to I'm going to demonstrate a few things. So that's the hardened round. Let's compare with the soft round. And what do you think the difference might be? Uh, if you if you just looked at the pictures of the you know the two brushes here, you'd probably be able to guess correctly. Yeah, it's just a much softer brush. Now you'll notice that uh, we have soft round pressure size, soft round pressure opacity, hard round pressure opacity, same diff. Uh, it, it's just like I was mentioning before, some of these brushes uh, have um, a way of interacting with your with your tablets. So if we select it, and here I am using, you can see how this works. Um, if I selected hard round pressure size, then you'll notice you can you can kind of dictate how big and how small it is by pressing harder or softer. If anybody speaks Chinese in the audience, pardon my terrible, terrible calligraphy. Uh, let's see, hard round pressure opacity would do uh, one of the things I mentioned before. I'm going to go really lightly. I'm going to go harder. Uh, I'm going to let up a little bit so it just gets more and less opaque, etc. Now, it gives you a few default brushes here. So uh, let's see. You can kind of guess what they look like just like by looking at them, but... This one kind of should look charcoalish. I'm gonna bring the size up. So you can see it has a different look than the hard round or the soft round look. Uh, here's another one. So anyway, the brush palette here gives you a few pretty convenient options right off the bat. The brush settings palette gets a lot more specific here. So let's go to brush shape here. Oh, sorry, brush tip shape. And let's just go, this one is just round. And you'll notice image here. I'm just gonna select this circle. You know what, let me open another document. New, I don't care what size, and there we go. So you'll notice it'll give us a few default shapes again. To get a good feel for what these brush tips look like, I'm gonna I'm gonna make them really huge. Hmm, not nearly big enough. All right, hey, there we go. Oops. <laughs> I just did a little sketch and now it's taking forever to process what I did. My bad. do that you see what this one looks like when you bring make it really big now you may have noticed that it didn't follow along exactly with the shape of this that's going to make sense in a minute but first so you understand the size right let's talk about uh x flip and y flip or just it taking that shape so uh, take this one for example. Let's make it real big so you can see what I'm talking about. Now let's do X flip. See what happened? It flipped it along the X axis. Flip it back. Let's do Y flip. And as you guessed, it flipped it along the Y axis. When you're doing tiny art, it, it doesn't, I don't, I've never used those to tell you the truth. So I don't know, maybe you'll find it useful. I do use this though. 
Now this to, uh, gives you the angle that you want this uh, brush tip to kind of tilt. So you can see it keeps changing every time I move this axis. And you can grab these little balls here and squish them down. So they can be, you can have like a real narrow tip, for example, you know, or, or, you know, back to normal. This is really useful for calligraphy in my experience. So let's, I'm going to take a different, I'm gonna, I took a, a nice round brush tip. I'm going to make it narrow. I'm going to tilt it at this angle. Make it bigger. Oof, calligraphy is not my forte. Um, what about a... I don't know. You get the idea. That's more like handwriting, but this is the purpose of tilting it, making it thinner. Get rid of all that. Okay, and uh, this does the same thing as that. Uh, this is just numeric. So when you change this, you'll notice that roundness increases in terms of percentage. The angle can adjust, and you'll notice the numbers right there are changing. So hardness. Um, so hardness, technically, or softness is just it just means that it's less opaque toward the edges of the brush tip so for example you'll notice that it has this very soft feathery look well in a, in a technical sense that just means that toward the middle of this line it's very opaque toward the edges it's less and less and less vanishes and you can adjust the hardness if we go all the way up 100%, it's just very hard. If we go all the way down, it's, you know, very, very soft. Spacing is a little hard to explain, but um, when Photoshop draws a line with the paintbrush, what it's doing is it's taking that, uh, that, that this shape, that brush tip, and it's stamping it again and again and again and again uh, in a row as you drag the mouse. And it, to such a point that you can't tell. But actually, this is, you know, it's like it's stamped there, it's stamped there, it's stamped there, it's stamped there, it's stamped there. Spacing allows you to adjust that. So 5% uh, means that it's stamping it every time you move the mouse, 5% of the width of the brush, which makes sense. That's why it's so fluid. I mean, actually, you can kind of see it toward the edge here. Look at that. So I don't know if you can see the outline of this brush tip, but it, moved, it started here. It moved 5% of the width of the brush tip and it stamped again. Then it stamped again. It stamped again. It stamped again. And then it's totally opaque. You can't see it, but it continues on. But if you were to bring it up to like 1% spacing, then it's going to be a ton. Let's see what happens. Oh, no, we can't tell with it. 100% hardness. We should be able to see it. Now let's zoom in real close. Okay. So it's. It's so close that you don't see that effect. It's only 1%. It, we're not even going to be able to see that. But let's increase it dramatically. Let's go up to, and you can see a preview down here, what it's going to look like. You know, here's 95%. So it's, it's going to stamp every time we move almost the whole distance of the brush tip. Does that make sense? So they're only overlapping about 5% of the width of the brush tip. By the way, it doesn't matter how fast you move the mouse, it's, it's still going to do the same thing. It's at every 5%. It has nothing to do with the speed. So if we move it to 5, 658%, or, you know, some other big number, it's going to be, it's going to stamp it very rarely. I don't know why you really want to do that, but you do have that option. Now, Let's look at a few other of these uh, menus here. So shape attribute, I'm going to open another file.
first things first, let's go back and undo the crazy spacing thing. Let's just go back to 5%. As a side note, before we move on, is you can control a lot of these things uh, more conveniently up here in the options menu. Uh, for example, you have the the tilt, all the all the the tilt and the width of your brush, the size, the hardness, and you even have a number of the kind of preset brushes. Um, mode we're going to get into in a little later, so just keep it at normal for now. Opacity. Okay, so we know what opacity is, but in terms of a brush tip, if we have at, if we have it at 100% opacity, every time we draw a line, it's going to be 100% opaque. But let's say let's bring it down to 50%, and since the background is white, you're going to notice that we're getting a really flat gray. But if we overlap, well, that's a little less opaque. There's some math behind it, so I don't I don't. I don't know what the you know what the math is, but every time you overlap, it gets a little more opaque. That's probably still not 100. percent That looks maybe like 80, but you will get to 100 percent eventually. Anyway, you get the idea. This is actually a very useful option, especially when you're trying to make some very subtle shading, or we use a blending tool, which uh, we've done a little bit with later, and we'll do more with later. This, put white in the foreground. Now, oh, incidentally, here's another very useful shortcut. If you hold down Alt on your PC or Command on your Mac, and then hold down the right mouse button and, and bring the cursor left or right, it'll adjust the size of your brush. If you bring it up and down, it'll adjust the hardness. And you can see it all in this little menu here. Woo, woo, woo. So let's see, since I just want to delete all that, oh, I need to bring the opacity up to 100%. Photoshop is devouring my CPU. Okay, there we go. All erased, ready for new art. I'm going to click this little button here to reverse the white and the black. So black will be in the foreground. I'm going to use my Control or Alt button or Command and Alt button. Command, Mac, Alt, PC, and my right mouse button to adjust the brush size, and there we go. Okay, let's click on a few of these menus. So, shape dynamics. So, um, some, in an effort to replicate the look of a, of a natural brush, say a piece of charcoal, a char whenever you take charcoal to a, cha to a piece of sidewalk, for example, a lot of people uh, right now are you know, making really nice sidewalk art. You'll notice that it's not uniform. It's not like the hard round brush with no, you know, no variation. It's it's very varied. If you if you draw a foot long line, every inch of that line is going to look pretty different. So Photoshop has a way of replicating this. Size jitter is one of them. So let's draw a little line here. You know what? I'm going to go to the spacing. I'm going to go maybe 50%. Uh, 50, yeah, 50%. Okay, now shape dynamics. Size jitter. Let's go about halfway. Well, first, let's just make a normal line. Pretty standard. That's what I expected. Let's go to size jitter. It gives you a preview down here, so you are going to get some idea, but... What's the difference? Well, every time it stamped your brush tip, it changed the size a little bit. It changed the size within a certain range. We said, okay, we'll allow it to change size about 37%. If we go, if we go all the way up to 100%, it's it's quite dramatic. Simple enough. Uh, we set the minimum diameter with this menu here. So say we we like it to change a lot, but we don't want it to be as small as that one. Do you see that one right now? That I'm kind of circling that tiny little spot. Let's say we don't want that. Let's just say, okay, well, we want it to be a minimum size of like 70% of our actual brush size. And we do it again. You notice that none are going to get that, none is going to get that small. The angle jitter, well, to do that, you'll have to see the angle. We'll have to change the angle of the brush. So we're going to go to brush tip shape. We're going to 
make it thin because otherwise you can't tell what angle it's at if it's a perfect circle. So let's make it real thin. And we're going to give it sort of like a, like a 90 degree angle there. Now, shape dynamics. Angle jitter will do what you probably are guessing right now what it does is it's going to change the angle. So if we did it normally, ooh, we still have the size jitter on. I'm going to get rid of the size jitter. So it should do what we expect. Let's do angle jitter 100%. Right? That's a little wild, but you can also make it a little a little less crazy by doing angle jitter 6% or even, you know, even 2% would or one let's do 1%. There we go. And roundness jitter, as you may have expected, will jitter the roundness. So right now we have a very, very uh, thin brush, right? But here, you notice that sometimes when it stamps, it stamps it real round, and other times not as much. And it gives a minimum roundness of 25%. So let's, I don't know, let's bring that up, see what happens. Down, see what happens. I think I made it so thin that it, you can't really by looking at it. Anyway, those are the shape dynamics. Let's go. Actually, let's try to reset everything. Okay. I'm gonna make my brush nice and round. But I'm gonna leave this. I'm gonna space it out a little bit more, actually, just for demonstration. Okay. Scattering. Scattering uh, is useful if you're, if you're it's a, again, another attempt to replicate the natural effect of certain types of brush brushes on certain media. I'm gonna start a new document, looks good. But this one will scatter where it stamps. Let's turn it up. Oh, it gives you a preview down there. So turn it up a little bit. Now we're going to make a custom uh, brush tip. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe out all this. I'm going to draw a little shape. Um, I'd like you to do the same thing. Draw a little leaf. Zoom in. I'm just going to use a simple, uh, hard round oops, brush. I'm just going to draw a leaf. Actually, you know what? Let me let me bring in a reference image. Let's see, maple leaf. Copy image. I'm gonna paste here. Fair enough. I'm gonna go to layers. I'm gonna add a layer above it. You should do the same. I'm gonna dim this layer out by clicking on the layer and then bring in opacity down to about 50-ish, 53, whatever. And press B for brush. I'm gonna just kind of trace it. Ooh. The opacity for my brush is, oh, I was paint, painting on the wrong layer. Okay, Let's, I'm going to name this layer reference, and I'm going to name this layer outline. I recommend you do something similar. All right, I'm going to trace this leaf. I'm going to give it a little... Actually, you know what? Let's just mm, let's use the the uh, paint bucket to fill it with. Uh, oops, if I just created that layer, I'm going to dump it. So go to the outline and fill it with black. Hmm, yeah, it does that sometimes. You can typically adjust that by changing this.
All right, so I cleaned up the maple leaf. It's all one solid black color. So let's go ahead and select our marquee tool and trap this design we made. And we're going to create a brush tip um, with this. So let's see, I think it's edit. Ah, here we are. Divine br uh, define brush preset. We can call this You now have a brush tip. So notice that your brush tool is selected here and where we have this maple leaf. Not bad, right? Layers, I'm gonna go, no, I'm gonna go ahead and draw on this layer. I'm gonna deselect because otherwise we can't draw outside that layer. There you go, you got your maple leaf. Pretty cool, huh? Now that might seem not super useful the way it is. I mean, who, who wants to draw a bunch of leaves lined up in a row like like dominoes, you know, nobody. But this can be useful if you're creating a tree. So, and that's actually our assignment for today is to paint a tree, create a brush, pre, uh, create a, a custom brush tip, and then create a tool preset, which is what the next step is. And then you're gonna use this tool preset to create a tree. So, on to the next step. I'm gonna choose a couple other colors. I'm going to choose a dark green and a lighter green. I'm going to put the lighter green in front. I'm going to put the darker green in back. Oh, whoops. That's good. Now, typically whenever you use the brush tool, the color it chooses is the one in the foreground. It's this one that I'm moving my mouse on right there, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, the other color does come into play in the brush settings here. If you want to select, let's see, color dynamics, I believe it is. So you can click that. Yeah, there we go. So you have foreground, background jitter. So first of all, I'm going to, uh, Create a little scattering. Do, 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 do. Unclick that, thank you. Scatter it quite a bit. Um, picture, and you can see what's going to happen here. You know what? We have them way too close to each other, so we have to go to brush tip shape and decrease the spacing. Okay. And let's see what happens. Oh, oh, and then color dynamics. We want to make sure that we have some good foreground to background jitter. What that means is it's going to pay, it's going to stamp some of the shapes as the foreground color, some as the background color, some of them anywhere in between. Hmm. Doesn't look like it's jittering a whole lot, does it? Let's turn up all these jitters. Brightness jitter, saturation jitter, hue jitter. Let's jitter like a maniac. Hmm. That's not what I expected either. Oh, you know what? Every time you click it, it'll do a different color. That's what it is. Although I believe you can set it. Yeah, there we go. If you click apply per tip, you don't have to like re-click your mouse button every time you want it to change colors. You can just hold it down and it'll jitter the color. Now, I don't want them to be red, blue, green, yellow, all those other colors. Uh, I just really brought those numbers up ultra high. I'm gonna bring, actually, I'm gonna bring everything down, and I'm gonna just leave background jitter. I'm just gonna do it 100%. Okay, so you're getting lots of uh, different colors now, but only the two colors, on, only between the two colors that I chose, So which is nice now. I don't want those blue leaves, there we go. So that looks like, that looks pretty nice, right? It's kind of randomized, just like leaves in the wild. Um, I would also jitter the angle. We did that just a few minutes ago. I think it's in shape dynamics. Oh yeah, a little size jitter couldn't hurt. Um, let's see. Oh, angle jitter. That's definitely what I'm after. Roundness jitter. 
no, we don't want that. So that'll that'll like you can get your leaves looking narrow and funny. That doesn't happen in the wild. And there we go. I don't know if you're looking, uh, but you can see that although they're all sort of pointed upward, you know, I, I don't think I want any like I don't know. I mean, I feel like leaves could point that way. Now that I think about it, you'd have to experiment, see what looks most realistic. Okay, so here's your assignment: is to draw a tree. And then use the uh, you, and then make a custom brush tip. Now you can use your brush to draw the trunk, however you want to do it. Uh, I'm going to do it in a few minutes. I'm going to bring in a reference image. I'm going to dim it out. I'm going to kind of trace over it. Um, you know, draw a trunk, and then sketch some leaves. And either you can either use the your your leaves to create a little just a little texture. You can make the whole green area out of the leaves. Whatever you think is most appropriate. Um, but I do want your leaves to be a custom uh, brush. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you how to save. So you, you saved your brush tip, right? But you do need to save the settings. So what if I want to come back to this and I want to have exactly these settings, the same colors, uh, the same angle jitter, the same, all the same jittering. For that, you're going to have to go to presets. Oh, tool presets, actually. Right? Go ahead and click on this little add an item button here. Uh, would you like to create a brush tip and or brush preset instead? No, just tool preset. Uh, let's see, maple, let's just call it maple leaf preset. Include color, yes, hit OK, and there we are. So now from, from now on, if you want to come back and have the exact same color, exact same you know, jittering and all these other elements, you can just click this tool preset and it'll be the same exact thing. So for your assignment, as I was mentioning just a moment ago, it's draw a tree. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and make my own tree and I'm going to put the video on fast forward so you can watch if you care to, you can try it your own way. You know, uh, as long as you make uh, a custom brush tip, a tool preset and draw a tree, that's, that's the assignment. So uh, do the following Monday. So I'll see you all then.
All right, I'm I'm fine with this. Um, I mean, you know, I feel like sometimes you could just keep going on forever, but uh, Hannah, you get the idea. I mean, we use the 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 new brush tip and the new you know preset to you know make a nice little tree. So there you have it. Um, you should probably turn out something fairly similar. Of course, everybody has their own style. So, you know, feel free to express yourself and, and do it your own way. But, you know, now you got a little taste of how it can be, at least one way it can be done. So uh, anyway, I hope I look forward to seeing your projects.